Boaz was faithful and he did what was right. And we never see a complaining attitude or we never see this attitude that says, I deserve to get, I've been faithful and I, did, I ought to get something for this. Boaz didn't work for reward. By the way, what do you work for? What do you do what you do for? Does somebody have to congratulate you every time you do right? A lot of us are like that, aren't we? Boy, you know what? I, I, I went to church faithfully <coughs> for three months and never missed a service and nobody said a word. You know, I was on soul winning visitation week after week after week and when do they call me? When I miss. What are you doing it for? Somebody have to congratulate you? Someone have to say, hey, good job, you're a great Christian? I don't think you'd have to do that with Boaz, would you? Boaz would have said, well, I don't know what you're congratulating me for because that's what we would expect, isn't it? This is God's law. Oughtn't I to keep God's law? Christian, what do you do? What does it take to make you do right? Does somebody have to pat you on the back all the time and say, hey, good job, and encourage you? I'm not against encouragement. But you're not doing it for those people. You're doing it for the Lord. And if you're doing it for the Lord, then where do you expect to receive your reward? Not here, I hope. So Boaz took Ruth, verse 13, she was his wife, and he went in unto her. And the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And here's a miracle. Boaz wasn't as young as he might have been. And we know that from our text. He's probably in his 50s, and there was a possibility... That even though he was faithful and even though he did right, he would not have had a son. But he did. And God gave him a child. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age, for thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee which is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him. Naomi came back with nothing but a Moabite daughter-in-law. And she said, I've lost everything. You know, she came to a time and a place when she said, if I'd had seven of those sickly pining son-in-laws, Ruth's better. A friend, many of us are holding on to or looking back to something which is lost and which is gone and which really isn't worth anything at all. We don't realize that we have the most precious thing that we could possibly have. I want to close this evening by sharing with you some things that you and I have that are better than anything you could lose in this life. I would begin by sharing with you eternal life. Friend, your life can be snuffed out like that physically. But your salvation is forever. When Christ saves you, you've got eternal life. I want to say to you that there's nothing in this world that could be like that. Pastor, before I was saved, I had friends and I lost them. When God changed me, my friends didn't want to be around me anymore. I was different. <clears throat> Can I remind you that you and I have God's Holy Spirit living and dwelling in us? And we have a comforter which is able to guide us into all truth. God's Holy Spirit. Can I remind you that we have Christ who's on the right hand of the throne of God the Father. Oh, does that remind you of something? You and I are able to, because of Christ, pray and have fellowship with God Himself, the Creator of this world, the Giver of life. Friend, there's nobody bigger than God. There's nobody kinder than God, wiser than God, better than God. And you and I have access to Him. I don't know what somebody that has that could look to and feel as though they've suffered loss. And Naomi had been in a place in her life when she felt like she lost. And she forgot that she had something that was better than that. And it wasn't just Ruth, it was God. And friend, you can go through anything. By God's grace and with His help, you can go through suffering that if you had to be asked beforehand, could you get through this, your answer would be, there's no way. But my friend, with God's help and by His grace, you can. 
I'd a lot rather have that than have everything just go right. Well, I know individuals that have gone through terrible suffering with God's grace. And you know, they testify to you that they'd far rather go through suffering than be without God. Because at least they have God through the suffering. Friend, you may be going through loneliness. You may be going through uncertainty. You may be going through despair. And can I remind you that those things are really not that great of a deal if you've got God. I want to ask you tonight, do you know Him? And do you have a relationship with Him? There's nothing else really matters. I can think back to times in my life that were devastating. Events in my life when it seemed as though the moment I was going through them, that there would be no way out. And that there was no future. And that things could get nothing but worse for me. And now I look back on them and think, well, that really wasn't that big a deal. And it wasn't just because it's in the past, my friends, it's because I had God. Things aren't really a big deal when you have Holy God, the Creator of the world, who is in heaven, who is not detached and unconcerned, but who knows you by name and loves you so much that He sent Christ to die on the cross for your sin. And He wants you to pray. And He wants you to ask Him for things. Friend, you're not desolate. And you're not alone. And neither was Naomi. She realized that when she had much. But do you know what? When she had nothing, she still had God. And she still had a daughter-in-law who was better to her than seven sons. Heavenly Father, help us to see things your way. God, may it be true of us that we wouldn't look at circumstances which are temporary. God, the good things that are going on in the life of these people will end when they're dead or when they've been raptured. <coughs> Father, the terrible things that are going on in our lives right now can't last any longer than we live. Help us to understand and see that our relationship with you is eternal and that you're good, and that you love us. And that if we're faithful and we do things your way, things will work out much better than they would our way. Help us to remember that you're good, and that you're better than us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's take some prayer requests tonight. Yes, ma'am.